Okay, so what we're going to do is just show you some more kind of like a tips and tricks type thing that you can use um, to get the iPad and the um, MacBook working together. Some of the fun things you can do. So obviously we all know the instruments on a Mac or on desktop rather are quite expensive and um, can be challenging for most people to, to attain. But most of us have a phone or an iPad or some other device that we can use with our MacBooks, which is kind of cool and use some of the instruments. So let's talk about how we can set it up to where we can use the iPad. We're just going to use the iPad today only because I'm filming with the phone, so I can't show you with the phone. Um, so this is a song I'm working on, but I'm but this isn't important right now. What's important is up here, this first channel and this one. So what I did was I connected a USB-C to this iPad and then sent it into the to the MacBook. Okay, that was the first step. I'm gonna minimize this so you don't see all that. The next step was to go into your audio MIDI setup. And when you plug in, you'll see your eventually your pad or whatever you have, iPad or your iPhone will show up in this um, setting in here. And you can, is this phone moving? Like, it is moving a little, I apologize for that. I'm, I got it on this corner, I'm trying to get adjusted to these cameras. Okay, so the goal was to get it, there it goes again. The goal is to get it to record, right? So here it is. You put it in, you hit press enable. It tells you right here, press enable button to place your iOS device in inner device audio and MIDI mode, which is cool. Because what that means is now your iPad can become basically a, a module. We used, to, we used to have rack modules that you use to play music. I think they still have those. A lot of people are digital though, but that was basically your instrument. So that's what this is gonna be like. Um, and so you hit enable, once you're done with that, then you go into Logic or whatever you have. I have Logic, so that's what we're gonna, we're gonna use. And we wanna go in and go to your preferences and audio. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see that. And I can move the camera around a little bit without it being jerky. jerky. Click on audio. And then you'll see, I'm gonna to try to use this pinch zoom. I think that'll be better. You see right here, I'm set up on my Duet USB. So you're gonna change the input to iPad. You see it is there? Change it to iPad, hit apply. So now what you have is the ability, but let me say this because I didn't know this in the video I watched, it was simple. At first I was like, oh cool, if you don't have the, Whatever device you're gonna use, if you don't have the sample rate set the same, you're gonna get crazy amount of static. So I'm gonna use um, AUM just because I find it easy. You can use whatever, just make sure that you go in and change that sample rate. So where's the sample rate on this? You might ask, believe me, I asked it too. It's like, why is it not just right here? Because they put the buffer there. Um, I had to go, honestly, I had to go search for it, but if you go to files, project settings, each setting in your track could be different, right? Cause you could change the setting in one track to something different. If this camera is moving, I apologize again. All right, so go into settings, project settings, you can see right here, and then go down to, I think it's under audio. And I'm um, right, this time. And see right here, sample rate, Make sure it's set at whatever you're gonna set it at. If it's 48, which I'm gonna put mine at 48, that's what that track is, right? Now you need to go over to the other device. So give me a second, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, see if we can get, I thought I could get it all in one. Maybe I can get it right there. Whatever you're gonna do. So let's start a channel. So I'm just gonna open up an audio channel for right now. And if you look at here, you'll see, let me see if I can zoom in and find a way to move this over for you to see it. Yep, that wasn't cool. This camera thing is not my, obviously, forte, but you can look. I'll try to turn this this way. Notice the output. USB, ADAM, right, left and right. That's what you want. 
If you don't see that on yours, something's wrong. It should be there. If you have the latest updates, you should see it. All right. So that's the output that's going to go into back to the Mac. So let's just, for example, let's just hook up. Um, let's do some horns. Let's, let's just do a tenor sax from Swam Instruments. Now I'm using the MIDI over here, so I can't have MIDI on the computer and here. So if you're going to switch over to, let's say the iPad, you got to disconnect M1. But remember I have universal audio, right? So I should be able to look at this. I'm going into the iPad without having to move it. And I should be able to throw that away for a second. Open up MIDI emitter device. You guys are about to see my hand. I'm gonna have to put it back in the camera. I was trying not to do that. All right, connect. Yeah, you're gonna see it now because I'm. It'll take me a little less time. All right, so now we have it connected over here, and you'll see there it is. Touch there. So now I should better hear it, but it's not ready yet because that's just the step to set the iPad up. Let's get back over here. This phone is all off. Sorry, this picture is looking bad. Okay. So let's go back over here. In order for this to work, you need to set up a track. So first of all, this is good. We hit apply, right? Because now we have an iPad on the input device. Great. On this first one, what I did was I set up a track and I'll do it just to show you. Hit the plus button. You're going to go software instrument and you're going to go to utility. See utility down there. Hopefully you can see it. External instrument. It does, don't mess with stereo. Just go mono for right now. Doesn't matter. You'll see because the sound's coming out stereo, so it's fine. All right, so there you go. Boom. Okay. And then you're going to set that. It's going to pop up external. Right now it doesn't say it. I'm going to cancel it because I already set one up. And you see over here, it says external, right? So this will pop up once you open it. This is what it'll look like, external instrument. You'll go in, you'll find your iPad. I, I mean, the guy that showed me, he said set it on MIDI channel one. You don't really need to. I don't know because his video was like about a year old, so I'm not sure back then maybe you had to, but now you don't. Just leave it on all. And then the main thing is here, make sure that the input is set to one, two. That's important because that's where the sound's gonna come out of the iPad on the on into. Okay. Next step is going to be making sure that you uh, have it on record. And then now, I left out a step. I told you about it, but I didn't show you. Just make sure you go into the iPad or wherever you're using and make sure it's set in the settings to 48K if you're gonna use 48K in the, on the computer. If you don't, I mean, it will squeal and make some really nasty noises. So what I did earlier, I'm gonna show you this. Let's see if I can solo this out. I was listening to the AU radio and you guys see me sample from there. And I kind of did that. This is what I sampled. I just was playing it, recording, and that's what popped up. So that's what I got sampled. I And to sample it to here, or anything that you're gonna do, because remember it's coming over as audio, this particular track that says external, this is what I was going to tell you. Remember you set it to one, two. So now you have to do an audio track. You're going to add an audio track and make sure the audio track right here is set to input one, two. It's going to pick up the, the um, audio from wherever, you know, it's coming through here. So you send it out through the iPad on one, two, you bring it into the iPad on this external instrument and then send the audio from the external instrument because it'll play through both. Watch. Well, you see it going there because it's routed there. Hold on a second, let me, let me unsolo this. See it coming there? See when they're both unmuted? But if you press record on this instrument here, it will record literally nothing. This is just like having an instrument in the track, but it's not really recording here. This is just, for you to send the output. So you have to set up an audio track and make sure it's one, two. All right, so there it goes. So that's what I sampled, but you can see now I can bring in something else, but I don't want this to record it. So what I'm gonna have to do is change this now to no input. So if you want a new 
track, what you want to do is just go right here and then duplicate the one that you already have. You can, and that's a cool thing here. Now in other places, you're going to have to find your little workflow. That's, I'm just, I don't know all the apps like that. I don't have that kind of skill, but whatever your situation is, just maneuver and fix it so that you're able to do it. Hopefully I'm not over talking this. All right. So here we go. So I'm going to change this from original sample to just, uh, we'll just call it sax. There you go. Make sure you arm. There's no input source. Make sure you go back now and put the input source on this one is one, two. So now see the sound. All right. So now you got sound. You can hit record there and I'm going to let you hear this track. It is not mixed. I apologize in advance. So this is what it sounds like. Okay, so you see it coming through. So then if you want to record, just so you can see that it records, just press record, make sure you armed it over here. I'm gonna put instrument on there, even though it's, all right, here we go. That was awful. And I don't even have any reverb on that. Usually I would add reverb to the iPad with that to give it a little more life because it sounds kind of dry, but it doesn't matter. The point is just so you can see it works. Okay, so that's a new, it's not new, but it's a new thing that I'm gonna be implementing because I was trying to figure out how to screen record, which I did figure out on the um, MacBook, but in all actuality, I think this is a better solution because I don't want to have to keep drag dropping MIDI all the time. And there's, if I can just use the instrument straight in and just play, it's like having a real instrument, right? And you just play it into it. And the cool thing is for some people that are fretting, like, well, how am I going to fix it if it's off? Come on, man. We live in a technology world. Click on the flex up here. You see that little thing that's called flex. Boom. Set it to auto slicing or if you want to put it at, monophonic or whatever you can just do automatic it, i think it goes to slicing you can go here click inside turn on flex here right i'm gonna set it to i don't really want to set it to slicing we am gonna see we gonna set it to polyphonic hmm. let's go monophonic why is it doing that Okay, I'm tripping. All right, so we'll just leave it on automatic, whatever. And then you can go in and adjust slices. That's pretty much what you what you can do on this one. So we're here, it's an audio. I don't really need to adjust it because I'm gonna throw this away. But you guys can kind of get the point here. If you wanna go in and adjust it, go in and adjust it. Once the flex time is on. Let's do rhythmic. Is it changing? Why is it doing that? Maybe because I have the record on? Anywho. So you'll see it's in there. If you want to just do something like cut a part off or delete something in there, go to file. I'm not here trying to teach you logic. That's weird. All right. I think that's everything. I think here's the flex tool right there. Why is it not populating though on here? Okay, anyway, I don't know why it's having a moment here. We're not doing speed. Oh, you know what, maybe I have, because I have flex there. There we go. I guess you can't have two tracks in flex. That was kind of weird anyway, I wouldn't normally do that. All right, so here you go. So uh, let's go here. Yeah, so see how this, like let's say I want this to be on here because it needs to start at that spot. You just, you see, you highlight that line and then drag it back, right? It's, it's warping basically is what you're doing so that the sample can be spot on. And sometimes when you move one, you gotta move another. So th that's for you to play around with if you really want it to be. 
I really don't like my stuff perfectly on. I like it off a little bit. That's kind of natural the way it should be. It's like I played the instrument, right? But if you really bad timing or something, and maybe if you wanted to do drums, I may try that another time. And I keep waving my hand in front of the camera. Apologies for that too. Um, if you're doing drums and you're off on something and you want to do drums, like use Koala from the iPad into um, directly into uh, Logic Pro and record some drums, like your riffs or something, whatever you want to do, you can do all that. Now that you know how to hook up the iPad or the iPhone to your computer, I mean, you're set. It's, you got cheaper instruments and you got Logic so you can manipulate or whatever you need to do. Anyway, you got the best of both worlds, as they say, and it's pretty cool. I'm gonna turn off Flex. I'm gonna get rid of the sample. Obviously, it needs to be recorded the right way. I'll do that later. It's not important, but I hope this video was helpful. I hope you got something from it that you can use, and maybe, um, yeah, maybe I'll have some more. Don't worry, there's always something I'm learning and trying to explain it to somebody or myself that is somebody. Turn off flex there. Um, all right, that's it. So enjoy, post your questions if you have any. I'll do my best to answer. If I don't have an answer, I'll try to figure it out some kind of way and let you know or direct you to a person that may know, right? Because it's just about helping people. That's all I do it for anyway. Um, all right, yeah, that's it. We're out.